Hey guys, hey YouTubers, welcome back to another part of the Mega Results unboxing. Uh, my sincere apologies for leaving you with music for the last instalment or most of it, but today hopefully can make amends and show you some lovely coins that people uh, who submit coins with me to NGC have had graded and results and uh, pretty good grades really. I think generally people have been doing pretty well and maybe they're just being a little bit more discriminating with what they're sending in for grading. Starting with these very nice um, quarter eagles, Indian head quarter eagles, notoriously hard to grade and we got a 55 there and a 53. Uh, and look at this one. 1925 was a pretty common plentiful year for George Sovereigns. Um, but 64 plus is absolutely a great grade for it. This 1916 got a 63. Uh, okay, I grant you, I agree, it is slightly easier to get mint state grades when it comes to some of the newer sovereigns, like the Kings. How about this one, VF35 for an 1832 um, William IV sovereign? Not bad, not great but all those coins in any grades are gonna be pretty expensive coins. Unfortunately, this one that Regal Stacker got graded is a repaired coin. And uh, it's always heartbreaking when you buy those coins and they've had a repair. And I know Regal bought that one at auction, so there may be some recourse to the auction company on that one. Another Silver Forum member sent in this um, Madras uh, Moha as you, uh, may remember for one of the arrivals videos and I thought this was lovely when it came in unfortunately you can see here just as it goes into the light it is a tiny bit bent there to the right on that side to the left on this side and uh, I didn't notice the rim filing or um, you know as well and this one here one of the very very sad cases but pretty common cases of uh, fake um, fake Jubilee head gold. There's been quite a few of them in the last few years. I think there's a lot of these fakes around. They all look pretty good. You can't necessarily notice them when they're coming in. Although I think the person who owns this did think that maybe in his heart this might have been a fake. Uh, wasn't that surprised, but still it's always pretty uh, diabolical and nasty um, and certainly doesn't give a really good feeling when you get a not genuine coin. This one belongs to the same guy who, um, who the, the full Mohor um, was. This one did pretty well. I think this one may be a pretty rare coin. You don't seem to see so many of the, uh, the kind of partial smaller gold coins. I think this is a nice coin and a good grade and hopefully he was able to make up a little bit on this one what he lost on the other one which turned out to be bent. Did somebody mention spot? Well there was a spot apparently on the front of this coin and uh, somebody tried to remove it but they weren't clever enough in how they covered up their removal actions so this one got details graded for spot removal, unfortunately. Pretty sad, but um, it's a 1930 coin. You don't see too many gold coins from Uruguay. This one did really well, 63, 1917 Peru coin. I, I really like this Libra coin when it came in. I think the, uh, the kind of Peruvian Indian with the headdress, I think it's really attractive. I like the shield at the back. I think everything about this coin is really nice and it got a great grade, which uh, is always a very nice result indeed. A 1917 Australia Sovereign, AU55. I suspect that was a, uh, a bullion sovereign that was picked up and uh, sent for grading. Sometimes those kind of coins are there in a big pile and they may not all make really good mint state grades. You may remember the infamous and prolific Mr. 1967. Well, this was one of the coins that he sent in, a uh, German, German coin, um, 
but the obverse had a small scratch and unfortunately that one got details graded. This one on the other hand, much much luckier and I thought this coin was really nice when it came in. I didn't know whether they would slab it so it was kind of a surprise when it got slabbed because the rules are a little bit opaque sometimes. For example on this one, um, Turkey medal I thought no reason why they wouldn't put that in a slab, but if they can't look it up and find it in one of the main coin connection, the name for quality assured modern coins, I know you guys hate adverts, so let's just call it 2% Rachel, Rachel in November. In one of the main catalogues, then um, sometimes they just give it ineligible type because they just can't find out whether it's something which is eligible and can be put into a holder but as I say the rules are pretty opaque and often there's no rhythm or rhyme about it things some things which I think should never go into a holder end up in a holder other things which I think are obvious uh, get marked as ineligible type this one did really well 1967 Switzerland really a uh, nice coin of Lugano uh, really nice back the Swiss kind of cross 68, I think pretty good grade for that coin. This one um, I really liked. This one is uh, celebrating the Six Day War in 1967 from Israel with uh, Moshe Diane there at the front uh, and the, uh, the Wailing Wall or the Western Wall at the back uh, dealing, dealing with the liberation of Jerusalem. Really, really nice coin, good grade. Right, end of that box, so let's see what's in the final box for you guys today. Not a lot of coins in this box, so uh, let's have a look at them. So a little bit of gold. 1854 $3 gold piece. Um, AU55 is pretty magnificent for a $3 gold coin. They're all obviously ones that are graded higher, but most of those are already in slabs. You rarely get one that you find that it is that is not a details coin that's still to be slabbed. So this was a major find, really good, uh, and uh, owned by a member of the Silver Forum. The $3 gold piece, incidentally, bought 130 cent sta stamps from the US Post Office when it was released. This one is a mechanical, in other words, it went back for review to NGC. I think originally it was a 64, and I sent it back again because I thought they'd really messed up the grade. I still think 66 is a little bit light for this coin, but it's a lot better than the 64 that it was before, and it's a pretty rare coin, not many of those around at all. This one was also mechanical. You may have seen this in other previous videos. This was sold by a mainstream dealer as a proof coin. And uh, it got an MS grading. MS coins are much less valuable than the proof ones. So I sent it back again. Uh, it came back as an MS. So I sent it back again. And they double checked it, looked at it under a microscope, wrote notes about it. And they actually concluded uh, categorically it was a mint state coin and not a proof coin. And so that's probably going to go back to the dealer. Cuba, Cuba Republic. Um, the first time I put this into NGC, they refused to take it on the basis it was a Cuban coin. Had to tell them it was a pre-revolution coin and probably, I think, was minted in the, the United States in any case. This one was another mechanical. This was sent back because the owner of this coin thought that it should have been a little bit more than a 62. It was sent back for a grader's uh, review and uh, came back as a 62. Incidentally, people ask me, is there a charge for sending a coin you think should be in a higher grade back to NGC? And the answer is, yes, there will be a, a chance, a charge for looking at the coin. At the very least, you'll get a tier fee or something like that. It is not a free of charge service. An 1870 half sovereign there, very nice in AU58. Um, really really nice or all, all pretty proof like coin from Hungary um, really really nice I mean there's a few marks on those fields but it was obviously one of the early coins from a particular set of dies and it's got a lot of luster um, pretty proof like surfaces although it didn't get a PL attribution from NGC but it got a 62 another coin 
really, really nice condition. This one got a 63, slightly higher. Again, tons of luster, pretty proof-like surfaces um, with no designation, but really, really nice. Just the kind of coin you want in a collection. 1871 Half Sovereign uh, XF. XF stands for extremely fine, although it's a bit of an anomaly because actually it's not that extremely fine, but it's kind of okay. This one, bit of a disaster, and uh, the second or third of these 1862s I've seen, um, one or two have been genuine and I've got through. Um, there seems to be a lot of fakes and you can see here almost there's another colour under the surface when it's rubbed. So this one may not even be made of gold. Uh, I don't know. It'd be interesting to put this one under a scanner, but it is certainly not a genuine one, unfortunately. So uh, with these coins, sometimes it's better to buy American dollar gold coins um, graded already to save the aggro of buying a fake one. This one acknowledged to be one of the finest Britannia patterns, if not the finest, ever made. The 2014, very expensive coin to buy, very difficult to find them, and uh, really, really nice coin, and uh, I think one that will continue to be desired in the Britannia range going forward. Thanks very much for watching. There'll be another one along as soon as I possibly can.